My name is Rika Neko and I started uh, working down here in the uh, old market urban district of Omaha, Nebraska, old warehouse district back in 1971. Oh, yeah. Artists are always the ones that you should go in first and chase away the rats and the drugs and the bad things and actually then start attracting other things uh, that are the, the things that make a very fertile ground for other kinds of uh, development. Our task was to build a year-round program for an artist residency program. And we didn't want to rent studios to artists. That wasn't our goal. We wanted to award the studios to applicants. We wanted to give them a thousand dollars a month stipend fee. We wanted to provide them with, uh, you know, uh, assistance while they were there to make their work. We wanted them to uh, have a living space within their studio space so they didn't really have to go far to, or wanted to work in the middle of the night or whenever. Um, and so that's how the uh, Bemis started. Everybody was rather amazed at the comfortableness of this town, this city. And it, I shouldn't call it a town necessarily. It's, it approaches a million people now. And um, they really liked working at these industrial sites. It, for me, it was breaking down that barrier of industry uh, and artists thinking really sad things about each other. Artists may think industry is very stiff and only makes their product and can't get around that idea. And they think artists are obviously crazy and <laughs> have tails or something. <laughs> so we put the two together and we found out we have something very in common, work ethic. And the work ethic was a really big deal. So when we had a summer months together, everybody sort of became, um, sort of fell in love with Omaha. And, uh, the first year, about 84 applicants, and now we have approaching 700 a year. And we have actually, over these 26 six years, actually helped about 700 plus artists to come through our facility. It's been wonderful. We bought that building across the street uh, in, a, in a kind of a odd way. There wasn't a bank that would give us any money, that's for sure. Uh, our budget was too roller coaster. I mean, we either had money or we didn't have money. It was, there was nothing in between. <laughs> <laughs> you know, either did or didn't. And they didn't like that. They wanted some consistency. And we, we don't make a product that's consistent. We don't make products. But we, you know, making artwork, it had no consistency and you have no assurance that anyone's going to acquire it or you're going to be able to, to sell it. So, um, and grants are always uh, fluctuate with the, the whim of whatever's popular or whatever, you know, seem to be happening. So, uh, we found a patron, though, that lent us the money, and uh, so I, I bought the building. And when the MacArthur came around, I asked for the mortgage. I always speak about putting the artists into ownership, or else they're just a, you know, they're just used. I mean, they're used to come in first and clear out the mess and set up the creative culture around them, and then they're bought out. They can't afford to be there any longer and they're off chasing something else. They don't have the benefit of what they have created in a sense by just being there and working as artists. They Actually that's taken away from them. The other people reap all those benefits. You watch these kinds of real estate things happen, you find that they actually fall into a downward spiral. And I've quite often gone to uh, cities to lecture and they have a problem where they've invested a lot of money in renovation which looks real cute. It's not a natural renovation, it's more of a city planned renovation. So it's all very stylized, you know. And they still can't get the problems out of there and they still can't attract the artists and they still can't make the galleries come there because it's all too artificial. It didn't grow organically. We're having that problem we were just talking about Leavenworth there. This, you know, we've bought several buildings up the street now. And um, we, we don't want the city to come in and 
make it an art district, you know, because that's the worst thing you want it to do right off the bat. You want it to grow naturally, yeah, you know, but pretty soon after you push the artists out, you just get everyone so eager at getting the public there and selling them whatever they can sell them that you end up getting a lot of t-shirt shops, rather mediocre food shops, ice cream shops, and all this kind of stuff that start to happen. And then what happens is that you have this uh, situation of a, of, it just starts to degenerate. All the high-end stores or exclusive kinds of shops go away right after the artist. But if you put artist ownership in there and you allow those artists then who want to leave to sell to other artists, you keep a certain stable economy and cultural economy in that area. And it doesn't uh, make a quicker, you know, a larger shift so quickly to a downward spiral. So I find it very essential to entice uh, cities or public city councils, whoever, to try to give artists, a, if they're an artist, they're in the studio and they're building a studio or renovating a studio there to give them some sort of tax incentives or tax breaks or allow them to have ownership and uh, allow them to uh, stay securely in that neighborhood because those are really your cultural building blocks in that neighborhood.